So you think you can uh, deliver? Uh, can you deliver the same joke with oh, good timing? I feel like yes. <laughs> hey, try, try. Are Malaysians too sensitive? Yeah. This is your daily ketchup. He say yes. He say yes. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> Malaysian. Oh, no, no, no. Singapore nasi lemak better. Like, Singapore nasi lemak better. Oi! So before we get into the episode, we've noticed that around 50% of the people who are watching our videos are not subscribed. So please, it will do us a huge favor if you would just go down below and take a few seconds to press subscribe. Like and one second, not even a few. And then if you got extra time, you can say, I, I like before I, I watch the video. <laughs> <laughs> Big and bad news as for one specific person that's currently residing in the US but was raised in Singapore. Amos Yi. <laughs> <laughs> Joyce Lin Chia. Uh, okay, so for those of you who don't know, the issue is that there was a US-based comedian that made a joke about MH370's disappearance and the Malaysians are very uproar about it. And some Malaysians are riled up by the fact that some Malaysians are riled up about it. But she herself was pretty unapologetic about yeah. it. She was, it was a stand-up set and then she made a comment about Singapore and then somebody cheered in the audience. So she asked the audience member, oh, are you from Singapore? Is it Malaysia? And then he said Malaysia. And then she straight up went like, F you Malaysia. Yeah, yeah. And then that built up, built up, built up into a joke about MH370, which is what triggered a lot of people. Yeah. So essentially she said that like Malaysia airplanes cannot fly and like some jokes don't but land. I feel like I've heard variations of these jokes done multiple times. Already. She herself actually came out and made a statement to say that this joke was funny in context and also that she has done this joke like hundreds of times before and then Malay she claims that Malaysians also go up to her after the show and like say, oh, you're so funny. But this is after the massive amount of backlash that she's received yeah. from yeah. both countries yeah. as well as our government coming out to apologize. So that means is we are apologizing like, to at, at Malaysia. Certain, at certain point, Singapore and Malaysia always have some form of resentment towards each other, right? And that's inevitable in the course of like geopolitical maneuvers. But for Singapore to tighten the tension ahead of a next event, it could be, for example, PM is going to visit soon, mm. where well, we increase trade level or, you know, yeah. or they are negotiating certain trade deals where this affects us on a huge economic level that they allow an ex-Singaporean comedian in the US that no longer is one no longer is a Singaporean, quite a joke to tighten that tension. It's just not worth it for the country to mm, yeah, mm. increase this risk. La. But actually people also made the observation that uh, this didn't really blow up until, so I think a Malaysian politician first tweeted about it and then uh, Vivian- Look at him on like comedy seller all the time. Okay, okay. Vivian Balakrishnan <laughs> said it was a horrendous thing that apologized. Then after the high commissioner, the high commissioner to Malaysia or something apologized, then become like a lot of like big political figures involved and then it blew up. Yeah. So this yeah. is a distraction for something else. <laughs> Sass. No, it's, yeah, but, but it's, it's quite interesting right, in the sense yeah. that it was it was sensationalized by the politicians. Like mm. the, the entire government, they just tweet. Like, my bad. Sorry, unacceptable. Yeah. <laughs> and, and did you all see the clip itself? Yeah, yes. I did. How, how, how did you all feel about it, first of all? Like, what were your first impressions? Especially then, representing Malaysia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You speak for, for Malaysia. Citizenship. <laughs> As a Malaysian. I think my immediate thought, right? So I, I was watching a clip and then I think it got to, a, I, I always like to give Senate communists a chance. Mm. So in my head, it's like, ah, yeah, people are overreacting. Let's go with this with an open mind and watch it. So I started watching it and then the fuck you Malaysian part, then I just went, huh. And then- But that part's not offensive though, right? Yeah, that yeah, part, yeah, yeah. okay. That that part, part, I think, okay. I think yeah, it was okay. okay. Then as I was watching my, my, my end reaction after the whole thing wasn't that, oh shit, I'm, I'm offended by it. I was just like, this set is not funny. Oh. And I was already ready to give her a chance. Right. I mean, okay lah. I, I do know of friends who had loved ones on MH370. And so in my head, I was like, okay, these, like my friends will confirm, like be really hurt by this lah. But for the entire population of Malaysia to be hurt by it, I, I yeah, I wasn't expecting that. And I don't think that's the case also. But were your friends or friend, like your friends back home or relatives back home? No, not, not really also. So like, as I was, reading Reddit and like and like hearing some of the chatters in like some of my group chats, right? I think people at least my age or like more urbanized Malaysians don't really care. And they were actually more ashamed of the backlash that's happening right now. Like, oh, this is so embarrassing. Now we look like we are a population that cannot take a joke. Like, 
So there is a subset of people who are like protesting in like the, so at the embassy. Oh yeah, there was a protest. Like 100 plus people, they go and protest. Yeah, but like they, were all, they were all associated with one party. I, I right. thought it was really nice of them uh, to go to the US embassy. As opposed <laughs> to the Singapore yeah. embassy, right? Like, yeah, yeah. like one of them made clear and say, we are doing it here because she's no longer yeah, a Singapore yeah, yeah, citizen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, imagine like, they had to research, right? And then yeah. say Singapore embassy and then yeah. go, guys, guys. No, but you no, imagine no. the US embassy person is like, yo, <laughs> <laughs> this joke is about Singapore versus Malaysia is in the context of you were a Singaporean. You apply, we let you in. You can't yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. joke my problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Then after they go to the Singapore embassy, then they say, she's not Singaporean. Then after they go back to the US embassy. That's embassy again. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, and there are headlines that are saying that they are trying to contact like Interpol or whatever, right? To try yes. and find For what? Who wants to win $99? Okay, okay, okay. We are going to answer nine food related questions, and the one with the most right answers wins the money. If you think you know the answer, squeak. First to squeak gets to answer. In Singapore, how do you order a coffee with no milk and less sugar? Alison. Coffee or coffee? Wrong. Chun. Coffee or Correct. Oh, thank God. Question two. What are bubble peoples made of? Ah! Alison. Tapioca. Okay, correct. <laughs> they could be brown sugar. Question Chico three. Me. Burger King has a different name in Australia. What is it? Denise. A burger Queen. Wrong. <laughs> Jackie. Wrong, wrong. wrong. King Jack. Ah, Alison, correct. Oh. Question four. What was the first food delivery platform in Singapore? Food <laughs> Cheat. Cheat. Alison, correct. Question five. Subway sells sandwiches that are a foot long. What is that length in centimeters? Alison. Chow. Wrong. 24. You have to give someone else a chance. 24. Wrong. 32. Closest, 30. Shums. What is Pizza Hut's phone number? Oh, six, Alison. Oh, six, two, three, five, three, five, three, five. Pizza Hut's right. delivery. Question okay. seven. What is the name of Food Panda's mascot? Pow Pow. Oh my God, that is correct. Question eight. What are the three drink sizes in Starbucks offers? Shums. Um, tall. Venti and Denise. Tall Venti Grande. Correct. Yes. Question nine. Last question. What is the original color of Food Panda's logo? Alison. Orange. Correct. Yes. <laughs> and the winner is Alison. Yay. The most number of points. This little game show was brought to you by Food Panda who have not one, but two promotions this month. In June, delivery fees for crowd favourites like Long John Silver's, Subway and Burger King will be locked in at 99 cents with no minimum spend. You can even get a surprise gift of Pow Pow Cup figurine or voucher when ordering from these participating outlets. And from now to 25th June, Panda Pro members can enjoy exclusive set menu offers at selected restaurants from $9.99 net when they use Food Panda's dining feature. Even if you aren't a Panda Pro member, you can still get these set meals at a heavily discounted price. These deals are happening right now, so just open your Food Panda app and check them out. Now, back to the episode. $99, please. So I think generally- They're gonna arrest her for a joke, man. Malaysia is asking Interpol for help on the grounds of insulting speech and offensive or obscene online content. But Interpol will not help to arrest. They can, they're essentially like a support like organization that will help you give the information, like share information. Just locate. Like, then yeah. individual countries will decide whether they will want to assist in the arrest. Yeah. Like. Generally, people understood why Malaysians were upset about the MH370 yeah. joke. But then when the news came out that they were contacting Interpol to try to like locate her, right? It's like, come down. Like, uh. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a bit too far. Like. It's a stretch too far. I think people do realize that it was insensitive but not to the point where we want to like arrest her, I guess. That was my understanding also. And I think there's a double edged sword to this. I can only think of, but then again, I'm only me and I don't know anything, right? That why, like, why would Malaysia want to do this Interpol thing? Yeah. And I feel like there's this general sentiment where Malaysians feel like because of my government, the world don't take Malaysia seriously anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like this is one of the reasons that right now it's very, very clear that it's a uh, world coming to defense of Malaysia against Jocelyn. Yeah. So it might feel like, okay, now is the time we will ask Interpol to do something for this, like, like this. And then we will show that we, we got a seat at international table, you know? But then again, because Jocelyn is in America, to me, I think it's very unlikely that the federal system there will arrest her mm. because free speech in a comedy cellar mm. didn't hurt nobody. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And she won't do it in such a double-edged sword that now when Malaysia activates Interpol, 
<laughs> the world ignores. Yeah, it also feels like one of those things where like, I mean, we like it's a completely different government now, well, kind of. And and so the same tactics wouldn't apply. But last time, whenever like Mahathir felt like there was, like he was losing like public, like um, support and things like that, he would just find a reason to like, put out a headline and shout out against Singapore so that you unite the country a little bit. And the country <laughs> is very divided, like more than ever, because you've got a coalition government that is right. put together, like they were frenemies. And then you have an opposition that's really, really, really strong. So the country is super divided. And it could have been that they felt, oh, this is an opportunity for us to all just gang out on this one Singaporean uh, who's based in Singapore uh, or US or US citizen or whatever, who used to be Singaporean. Um, but then, like I said, like, I think at the end of the day, if the joke came out and the whole world said, oh, bad. Shouldn't have said that. It would have been fine and Malaysia looks good out of the whole thing. Agree. But now, it just feels like Malaysia looks very petty about a joke. So, you know, because uh, we've been picking up on some of the Malaysian content to do commentary about also, right? Mm. Then in preparation for that, I was Googling like, are there things that I cannot say about Malaysia or cannot talk about? Mm. So I stumbled upon this like Reddit thread, which was... Also, a, a guy from UK that I think he's coming over yeah. to like make some jokes. Lah, and he's coming over for like a stand-up show. And then he's she's asking- the one to read oh, <laughs> of things that she cannot say. <laughs> she's asking, he asked like how triggering are dark jokes. And then people like start replying that correct, correct. you have, we are quite a sensitive bunch. So avoid dark jokes unless you're absolutely sure people are okay. Do not joke about Islam. The last time someone did so, a comedy club was shut down. Oh, that, oh avoid my. jokes it's about true. their kings. Oh yes, about yeah. their what kings? Oh, okay, okay. So I say, <laughs> no, but maybe, maybe that too. Is in legislation, ma. I guess fair yeah. enough, la. Even if you say something marginally around, well, I don't. I can't even say it. That's the problem. <laughs> like, no, I, you might not go back to Malaysia after saying. Can yeah, you say it? Then we beep the whole lie out. Okay, but okay. I, I'll just be a general. <laughs> if anyone critiques the whole idea of a monarchy, even right, and Reddit is already the most like liberal you can get of communities, right? There will be about. 40 or 30 percent of Ooh. redditors that will be like, dude, you can't say those that kind of thing. And not in a I'm looking out for you legislation kind of way. It's like, dude, what the fuck? You know? And they believe it. Like yeah. they I, I I mean I believe so lah. It, it feels like that's so amazing though. I'm is it the, for the monarchs. But is it the same <laughs> as how we cannot say that like uh Lee Kuan Yew is sort of a Whoa! <laughs> see. I'll just beat even though you didn't say anything. <laughs> Dictator. You can. 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 can say. Then he drink baby blood, can? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How about the fluoride in our reservoirs? <laughs> or that, or that the, the wife of uh, Lee Sien Long is Can you back it up? Or you just... There's a Reddit thread that has since been deleted that he is drawing reference from. Yeah. Oh. Damn sus though. <laughs> 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 Well, I mean, yeah, I think, I think this one <laughs> of the- be here in the next episode. This is one of the misconceptions of, of the, the POFMA Act, of which like, oh, you just can't say anything about governments. It's not true. As a Singaporean, you can voice any form of your opinion. Mm. Yeah, you can. Because there is Grace one, and, and I, I cannot mention which one, but there, there's a satire um, Instagram oh. publication in, in Singapore that cracked a certain joke. And MCI actually, um, email them and say that we understand your intent of this thing. However, you are rallying at certain communities. And I, I don't know what the Indian asked them to do, but it's not even to delete it one, you know, it's, it's just to um, put in a comment section just to tell people that it's these guys satire. remind people that this is satire. Oh. And MCI like left it there. And because it was Singaporeans making joke about something. Mm. Yeah. And and the the owner of that, that publication also came out to say, he's very surprised. He thought when he gonna when the MCI email coming, he's fucked already. Mm. But it's not. They're just like, hey, we we get it. Mm. Yeah, but like, clearly there are people that don't get it, and we receive complaints already. Mm. Yeah, so like, can you all do this, do this, do this? The next time, if you're not sure, you can check with us. Mm. And uh, which I thought like, that's the way. In fact, we need to operate in. We cannot do so black, so white. Like no abortion under any circumstance. Or, or abortion, no questions asked. To me, uh, that's that's too black, too white. We, we don't know. Like you can never withdraw your CPF ever until you hit retirement age. No, like it cannot be. There are grounds for appeal. Well, I'm so indoctrinated into this. <laughs> the the laws are brought in a way whereby the authorities are not trying to. The, the authorities come in to say we won't enforce. Like this one, we will give chance. You know, as opposed to the laws are so narrow 
is how so it difficult. Comes. I just want to make people laugh. I I personally when I when I was when I was watching the clip right, the the joke first of all didn't land because it's so. She's playing a character. She's trying to be the angsty person, right? Like, you know, Ronnie yeah, Chiang, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Chiang or whatever. Mm. He also, he will cope, right? But the thing is that he's pointing out things that are the absurdities of life, of, yeah. of human behavior and, and yeah. all that, right? But hers, not really. Eh. Then yeah. she still want to play with the tension and then add on tragedy. And like, down. and then never navigate that well, right? Like, oh, I shakes, yeah. No, I, I feel like it's a timing thing, which Ooh. I think, um, uh, no, no, as in a comic timing. So you think uh, you can deliver? Uh, can you deliver the same joke with no, good timing? No, I feel like yes. <laughs> hey, try, try. No, I, uh, <laughs> no I, because I, once again, I feel like this joke, like I've heard this joke, you know, like the Singapore versus Malaysia, but the not, not like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. but like the airplanes uh, cannot fly because engine stolen. I've heard like they've made that gag before and I think maybe it was Dr. Jason or, or maybe like, a Singapore comic. Like we've heard these jokes before and the- What are you pointing at yourself? This one does Singaporean comics. Oh, sorry. Hey, hey, Singaporean, hey, hey, the Singaporean hey. but Right, or the, or the these jokes don't land, not all jokes land. I feel like it was cracked about like 9-11 before or even MH before. But it's like, it's the mean spiritedness that comes from it. Yeah. No, it was the comment she made after. So she can kind of tell her joke didn't land already, right? Yeah. <laughs> Then after that, oh, she oh, say, oh, oh, oh. then after that, she say, why Malaysia Airlines going missing not funny meh? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Then yeah, she yeah, said, yeah. this joke kills in Singapore. So I think that was the like, it felt a little bit desperate. It was also. the no going back Yeah, point. I think it was, it was the mean spiritedness and the desperateness. Yeah. It felt desperate. No, but I think also the context, right, is that she's in America and it felt like a lot of the audience members were, it's not like Singaporeans coming to watch a Singaporean comedian. It was, she had to explain a lot of things. So it felt like it was an American audience. Right. Yeah. And so then I think the explanation of all of that and then in the end, the way how she just delivered the joke about Malaysia and Singapore, it didn't feel deep enough that like it was a good jab. Like say for example, Dr. Jason, who is Malaysian or like someone like Fakha or Kuma or whoever who is Singaporean, and you deliver it in either Singapore or Malaysia, there's a lot of like little nuances which would have been funny for our local audience, mm -hmm. whether you're in Singapore or Malaysia. But because she was there and you have to be a bit vague because in the end of the day, Americans are not going to know the very deep-seated like like nuanced jokes between you guys, right? Right. Then I felt like everything, like just why why make that joke, you know? Like it just felt- So everyone like here is play. saying that if she delivered the joke better, it's okay. If we consider whatever is within that time period of the set to be just a performance, right? Yeah. Then should people also then not find issues with blackface? Because as a very extreme example- It's just a performance also. Yeah. yeah, it's a performance that is put within the end. I'm an actor that got hired to do this, but outside of this, I'm not racist. Ah. Malaysians, are you sensitive? Let us know in the comments down below. Is Singapore Nasi Lemak better? Let us know down below. Like, share, subscribe. Back to the episode. So everyone the here is play. saying that if she delivered the joke better, it's okay. Like it's no, it's okay, okay. As, a, as a like. You do not trap us like that. <laughs> <laughs> because she, uh, there was one comment that she responded to, right? That people like took and was very angry with it. That people say you cannot joke, you can never joke about tragedies like this. I, yeah, this thought, I, people I, need to I, shut I, the fuck up. I disagree. Right? Okay, yeah, and then yeah. she, she replied tragedy saying- Tragedy plus time equals, equals funny. Uh, equals comedy. comedy. Yeah. Uh, she time, replied that. Yeah, tragedy plus time equals comedy. Which is a horrible thing to say also lah. <laughs> True to a certain extent. No, if you're no. you damn good and your jokes are like fucking banger and legendary, then say it all. Uh. Yeah. But you haven't, you haven't <laughs> done correct, it yet, correct. then shut you up. Like, make, make everybody laugh, then make everybody feel guilty after that, then you take the blame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But the... If it's not funny, then people not laughing, then you tell them, yo, it's funny eh. No, I, I do think that can joke, but you must have good jokes. Yeah. So but it's not just whether, delivery, it's the writing. Is good. When I write it, I think it's damn funny. Ma. You have like, to go to the comedy seller and workshop it lor. That's what she was doing. <laughs> so according to her, right? No, she do like hundred. She times has been today. using this material for a year. Yeah. yeah. And so traveling all around uh, the US and usually uh, this joke kills her. Something that I thought was quite interesting about the comment that she put the time plus tragedy equals comedy, right? Was because <laughs> last night I used to watch a shit down of Ellen before she got canceled. Mm. And- Why did she get canceled? I don't remember. Cause she, she was a mean person. She mistreats her stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I knew that one. Okay. But back then when people liked her and she was considered funny, right? Um, she was actually asked to be the host of a Emmy award ceremony in 2001. And so that was like very, very close to the 9-11 tragedy. Oof. And then, and we know that like as in as the host, you have to bring like almost like a stand up set, ma. So, 
uh, later on, she reflected on one of her shows about how difficult it was to be the host for this Emmy because it was a time where she felt like the country needed laughter. Mm. But how does she bring that laughter without offending people or without downplaying that this huge tragedy just happened and we want to remember the victims? Right. So you can go and find this on YouTube. But essentially, it's actually come out, right? Then she give like a very small, she start out with a very small joke. So f- throughout her her set, you can tell how she slowly like warms up the audience until eventually towards the end, then she makes a 9-11 joke. Right. Yeah, so... It's like from when she come out and she say, oh, welcome to the 52nd, 53rd and 54th Emmys. Because it got postponed, postponed, postponed because of <laughs> right. it. And then so straight away, people kind of know that, oh, she's like the context of it is that it was postponed because of the tragedy. Yeah. So people already knew. They eventually built up to like, uh, uh, it's very important that I'm here because what what could anger the Taliban more than a lesbian in a suit in a room <laughs> surrounded by Jews? <laughs> 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 oh shit so, that's not bad yeah, yeah but the important good. thing is that she was not joking about the lives that were lost yeah, yeah and yeah, I think yeah, that yeah. that might have been a big part of why people are upset about this MH370 joke because I think if she had joked about government response so okay I don't know how uh, how much how much anger people have at the government response but if she had joked about that then I think it would have garnered a much different response mm. yeah so um, comedy seller. If I'm not wrong, there was a strictly like a you have. I have to surrender my phones or my phone cannot be seen out of my pocket. Kind. Yeah. However, they do have a camera that's recording. Yeah. It's so that the comedians can promote themselves, lah. They are testing material. Yeah. And the jokes are very sacred to them because once it's formed, right, they are going to tour with these jokes yep. over two years. So they cannot at this point where they haven't tour and declare themselves, right? give out jokes. And and because people are testing also, so they are going to do a lot of jokes that may be not funny, but they were going to mask it under the guise of conversations. Mm-hmm. So you don't want to have a clip of you like 10 minutes straight, all your jokes don't land. Yeah. So the funny thing is that for a lot of these places, they go there for the comedy, right? Um, but they will never know who's going to show up. Man. And yeah, most yeah, of the yeah. time, they purposely don't want the big names they will never announce because they want they don't want their fans to be there when they are testing material. Yeah, right. Because it's just different, ma, right? Yeah. So they want to test with an audience that they totally doesn't know them or don't expect them at all. Yeah. Yeah. And and so they when I read up. reviews like or, or like stories about comedy seller before we go, right? I tell Pat, like after we sit down, right? And we all settle, everybody sat down, no one walking around. I tell Pat, I keep looking around because there were many stories about um Dave Chappelle sitting at the back by himself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or like uh, Kevin Hart <laughs> just over there or Joe Rogan at the corner, you know? Then then midway through, right? Then they will stand up and go. Then I, I just like every every 10 minutes, I would look <laughs> at this dark door where the comedians walk out from, right? To see where the curtain open at the time Joe Rogan inside. Right? What if you're the stand-up comedian, you don't annoy, you know? Like yeah. right in front of you, right? They're telling joke halfway, you keep on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, like, sad, like, like, <laughs> when he dropped the punchline, then he... <laughs> so what I'm wondering, right, is did comedy seller clip this part and just post without Jocelyn's approval? Or was it collaborative? And it was mm. and whichever it was, right, who apologizes? Like at some point they have a group chat, like, like she or like she has a <laughs> she has a WhatsApp or Telegram chat with someone from the comedy seller, some manager there, right? Who says, hey, sorry, eh? Who? Because Jocelyn said the joke, she didn't post it first. Comedy seller went to post it first. So they kind of, fuck. I, I don't think they will be that insensitive and I don't think they're that tone deaf to be posting the shit jokes or the ones that didn't land. The fact that it roused an, uh, a reaction from the audience and got a re- like, yeah, the audience reacted, right? And on top of that, she said she repeat a few times already, right? Most of the time, these comedians are going to the same places over and over again, yeah. over the year, ma. So I- Which then do you think that comedy seller thing was totally fine? I honestly think so. In yeah. fact, right, I would think that- Or oh, they were trying to rile people up. No, it might have been that they, maybe they just check the clip with the person then they say whether okay or not. Then the person say okay. Yeah. Because right now, right, even her response shows that it's not that it's against her will that this clip was released. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 No, but Comedy Seller had to clip this part. Ma. I mean, uh, presumably it's a 30 minute set where all mm. which three minutes was clipped. I don't know how long the video was, right? Three minutes was clipped for this set. It means someone in Comedy Seller, unless she she owns self her recording, then she clipped, then she said, hey, can y'all post this? Lah? Or someone from Comedy Seller clipped this part because they thought it was quite funny. And say, I, Jocelyn, I think this is good for you. We're going to post it up on our YouTube. Oh my God. Or it's a social media expert, right? To the point where they know that this all this train of events is going to happen. Exactly. No, that's my question. Because so, you do that sometimes just to piss people off on our Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that means they intentionally did this to rile up this whole side of the world. But then they wouldn't have taken it To down get her name out. 
No, because they done enough Unless already. They done the mixer, part of the steps. Yeah. So oh I, shit. Then, then two months from now, right, or one month later, then her Netflix special come out. Exactly. Exactly. I think it's at the end of the day, net net. <laughs> it's a very beneficial thing for her, whether or not she sees it. But I think she does. Yeah, because a lot of people say, "Oh, I've never even heard of her before this." Exactly. But now a lot of people have heard of oh, her. Interestingly, for some reason, because like we were looking for a guest, like might so happen want to join the show, right? So I, I just searched like stand up comedian Singapore. She was on a, a, a listicle, like seven best like Singapore. She's gotten quite a few comedian. awards. Who's so won? Best. Uh? Who's Kuma. Won? Kuma. Uh, Kuma. 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 One of them was Dr. Jason Leung, who's Malaysian. <laughs> <laughs> what do y'all feel about this this saying, like comedians should punch up and not punch down, right? Mm. Do y'all feel like that's authentic to the craft? Or is that where they draw the invisible <laughs> line of wokeness? You know what I mean? Like there are certain jokes we crack and certain jokes we don't crack, right? Because we don't dare. If comedians are all fixed with this punch up, can only punch up, don't punch down. Is it is it true to the craft? It's, it's supposed to be authentic. Uh, we are here just to make you laugh. And, and it's just a joke. Like, how how can anything said on a stand up stage not be meant to be a joke or satire? Yeah. I mean, I I think the the one thing that comes to mind when you talk about this was the the Dave Chappelle speech that he did at his like his I believe his like secondary his school or one, whatever. Yeah. No 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 he 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 did so it wasn't even a stand up set it was he he went back to his secondary school to like help open up the Dave Chappelle Center or something like they 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 dedicated uh, after his name and this was after he already had backlash from like the trans community yeah. and all this uh, and he basically said like um when that all happened and then they still wanted to name the building out of him, like after him, right? He was like, should I do this or not? And then he realized that he really needed to because it's so important to preserve comedy as stand-up comedy as an art form. And what a lot of people don't get is that it is an art form. When he's on stage and he starts speaking, people mistaken that for Dave Chappelle, the person giving a speech, mm. as opposed to this is a performance. This is me as a character or whatever, like, this is just the art and whatever I say starts here and ends here and it needs to be like taken separately from who I am as a person. I'm here to make people laugh. And so then like when people start using that as a, this is his opinions and it's it's wrong and like cancelable and whatever, right? It's like at the end of the day, I'm doing what I can to just make people laugh and the comedy is not for you. Then then don't don't watch it. It's like, if you don't like Silverstein, for some reason, don't don't listen to their songs lah. Like go and listen to pop or whatever. Like, so I, I I really resonated with that because I think a lot of people find the art form because it's the closest thing to spoken word. Like it's the closest thing to our own opinions as mm. possible. So people find it very difficult to like differentiate. But I've seen people like my my like some of my favorite comedians like Jimmy Carr and like I've spoken about it where he's able to talk about things like the Holocaust or like Down syndrome or like. And I don't think you can say anymore, but like spasticness or whatever, right? <laughs> and he can make it funny within the context because he will say something like how like you're not supposed to joke about this, not supposed to joke about this. And then he will deliver a punchline that is about it. And then you go, okay, this is funny because he set up everything around that already. And then it's okay. And so even though he's punching down, there is a very, f like a beautiful art to that, that stroke, you know, stroke's not the right word. Um, the caress. The caress. <laughs> Louis CK, uh, a stroke is is yeah more famous than that. But like I think that there's a beautiful art form to that that is then appreciated. And I think with someone like Jocelyn, she, it's not whether she punch out or punch down. She just didn't have that that the masterfulness other, uh, of the craft yet to like navigate a topic like that. Which is what I meant by like I think if it was another comedian, it would have been fine. Not because it was delivering the same lines. I think they would have had the ability to navigate the topic a lot better. Like something like Denise mentioned about maybe it was government response or maybe it was something contextually out of it that wasn't necessarily about the life's loss. Yeah. That was a long rant, sorry. But as in, does that not become such a free pass to the comedians that they can say whatever the heck they want to say and then after that they just say that, oh, it was just a joke. In and how to say, like, if we consider whatever is within that time period of the set to be just a performance, right? Yeah. Then should people also then not find issues with blackface? Because as a very extreme example- It's just a performance also. Yeah. yeah, it's a performance that is put within the And then I'm an actor that got hired to do this, but outside of this, I'm not racist. Ah. Yeah, but you see, right? If if there's anybody that becomes a judge, right? Or a ruler or, of deciding what is tasteful and what is not, right? Yeah. Then you place restrictions already, which is the problem. Comedy cannot have restrictions. Because comedies are like comedians are what? 
I don't know. Oh, I, I feel like <laughs> why are they special? Because comi- comedy, co- com- comedians, right? They're, they're trying to give comics, you apparently. a comics. Yeah. They they help you to gain or garner like a fresh perspective on things, ma. They mm-hmm. help to they help you to see life in like different ways and help you to question things that things that you otherwise wouldn't. But not just comedians though, like YouTubers also. What? <laughs> not like sometimes it's through short film, through skits. Or maybe, maybe, right? Okay, okay. So there are two things that I, I've noticed in the in the comic space, right? Which are which kind of blur the lines of what you are talking about. Because when once social media pop off, everybody has has uh, an audience already and, and a sizable one at that. And most of them maybe are not exposed to the comic world. They don't understand what stand-up really is, right? So because of that, a lot of misinterpretation happens. But the, at the same time, you also get these people who are not, they haven't fully refined their craft yet, mm. having these audiences and then just putting all this shit out there. So mm. you get very low quality. Yeah. Um, and 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 not only low quality, but sometimes not tasteful. Lor. Yeah. Like poor jokes and all this kind of thing, like like this, like this particular one. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And then the other thing is that, like what you're talking about with the character, right? Like a lot of people don't realize this, but they need to understand that, like the this as an is truly, truly, truly an art form. And if you look at, for example, performances like um like Bo Burnham, you all you, you know the guy? Yeah. No. So Oh, I know Bo. Uh, Bo Bo la. La, right? Yeah, 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 Bo, Bo, Bo. <laughs> so he sings song, he, his, his, his live performances, right? He will sing some song and then he will tell some jokes and everything, right? Is so fucking calculated, right? That he will, some parts he will act like, ah, yeah, this part I don't want to joke, la. but actually it's part of the joke, yeah, you know? Yeah. And it's time with the lighting, the music and everything. And as much as it's, it's beautiful in itself, right? And it's a very, it's a slightly varied version of, of comedy, right? But that shows you how calculated everything is. And just because a, a stand-up comic is standing there and it looks like he's just talking into a mic for an hour or two, the same amount of calculation goes into that whole performance as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that is a very good way to help you all see like that this is really the, the character and not mm. the person. Which yeah. is why I tried to find like her full performance because I'm not sure whether there was like a lead up to it that would have in any case made the joke okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that I cannot find that, so I'm not sure. And I think Chances would it help her to post it? You, <laughs> you know what I mean? Now she's like presumptuous to assume that people want to watch the whole thing now. But I feel like it doesn't need because like the, the start was already like where you from. So it's probably that point of her set where she's going, where you from, where you from, no, where you from. No, the, before that she was talking about something else. She, was, she mentioned Singapore as part of her set. Right. And then after that, somebody was like cheering. Oh yeah, okay, okay, yeah, okay, okay. So okay, then okay. she interacted with that audience She did member. say in an interview that after this whole thing happened and unfolded, right? Her shows are more, I mean, she's still doing shows uh, and they are booked away in advance because people want to find out who she really is. Fair enough. So, so they're not disappointed though. No, but you see, <laughs> no, like, because like you a, say this really worked out for her. But yeah. it's a double-edged sword, you see. Yeah. If you are very good at what you do already and all you needed was this, then sure, people are going to go and see the shows yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're going to be like, wow, I wish I discovered her earlier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If not, right, it's going to be everybody show up and see that you're trash. And you cry in your life. And then your career is over already. No, but at least you made a bit of money on the way. La. Like to, to me is that she can start <laughs> advertising herself. In America, you can really sing anything you want because it's free speech, right? The woman who took a country down, you know? And then yeah. like, she can do literally just bo- go and do, yeah. Do a tour. Uh, uh, overcoming the mental health disorder. <laughs> and she does a tour and then ask everyone, like, cannot use your phone so that no one can actually post clips of her bad jokes around and then do like a 52 week tour, right? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Just sell out in every single state. Yeah. Don't give her any ideas. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching today's episode. I hope none of you are offended, but offense is taken, so it's your problem. Okay, like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Ninety percent of nights I don't snore. So, but when the guy was making a a, a gag about snoring, right? He asked Pat, "Oh, does he snore?" Then Pat just go like, "Yeah, just to lie on the joke." <laughs> then I was I was so hurt because this was like some, you know, like we don't know how famous this guy is. <laughs> he just like cried that whole fucking set, right? Then Pat just like laugh along. Ah. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I definitely see it, yeah, like <laughs> because it's just a stand up. I right? see for what? No, yeah, today on the on on the cap, yeah, like, why you just tell him that I snore, like, like I snore. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then I was like, I don't know, it's like funny or you know, like, I feel like if I say no, the joke will end. I'm like, she's right. Okay. But funny, you not. Know? Or is it? Uh, no, I don't, I don't remember that part being funny. <laughs> <laughs> like, too, like, too sensitive <laughs> or <the whole> thing. <laughs> he only seeing red. Look at this bitch lie. <laughs> <laughs>